What is going on, you guys? Welcome back to another live stream here on the Sergeant Tank and Jeff Rose channel. And uh, we want to thank you guys very much. This is our second week now that we've done a live stream. You can definitely check it out uh, in the video repertoire of this channel uh, if you want to see any other live stream that we've done. And definitely check out the description within each one of those videos to get to know a little bit more about myself and Jeff Rose. So definitely I encourage you guys to check out last week. It was a great topic. This week we're going to be talking about specifically dwarf shrimp, neocaridina shrimp, more of your common lineage of shrimp that you would find uh, through your local markets, whether that be through another hobbyist or your local club, through a fish store, that kind of stuff. So we're definitely excited about it. Um, and I want to turn the camera over here in just a second to Jeff Rowe, and he can say his hellos. We want to thank everybody here in chat. Uh, looks like we have Eileen Queen first in the house. How you doing, Darcy? Followed up by Turbo Fish, or looks like switch your name there to Jeffrey Myers. We got Keith Forley, Reels Tanks, uh, Candy Overhauls, Jeremy H, Lumpy Dog. It's great to see you back, Jeff. Um, I'm sure I'm speaking on behalf of everybody there. Uh, Mortar Sawyer 82, uh, 54 Punchy, Blue Waters. Uh, who else do we got here in the chat? Uh, we got Joel G from New Zealand. So uh, we got Maple Street Aquatics. I think that Dan Slee. If I miss anybody, I do apologize. We got Vanessa, uh, Shelby Ray. So hello, hello. So I hope that you guys are excited about it. I know it's something that really Jeff and I both enjoy to do, and that's keeping shrimp. Uh, I've been doing it for a long time. I know that he's been doing it. So what we're excited about is to share, you know, Maybe there's differences that we have in the way that we keep. And our biggest thing here is to provide a little bit of insight and inspiration. And ultimately, you guys decide what works best for you in your home aquarium. So maybe a method that I'm doing because of my water chemistry, whatever it might be, might be able to adapt a little bit better uh, within your own home aquarium versus or vice versa. You know, maybe the, the water chemistry, that kind of thing, uh, work better if he's got a different method. So I'm going to turn the camera over here to Jeff. Floor is your my man. What is up, guys? Uh, welcome to uh, number two here. Uh, like we said last week, bear with us. We're going to get this thing uh, locked in. And, um, you know, basically this week we just want to, um, you know, just two guys that have kept shrimp uh, talk with each other about the, the good things, the positives, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And, um, yeah, sorry, I will say... I'd like to admit that I am the reason why. I don't know if we ended up starting having a late start time or not. Uh, this Friday night uh, just kind of fell apart on me really quick. I had a couple of tanks that were completely dead, and I had to figure out why they were dead, and I didn't know how long they had been down for, so I had to get them up and going, and uh, it took me right up until the last minute, and uh, so I apologize for that. But, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm enjoying this uh, channel here. I'm enjoying the uh, different topics every week, you know, and um, I love to keep shrimp. I've been doing it for quite a few years now, <coughs> and uh, specifically the Neocaridina shrimp. And um, yeah, so let's see. Let's talk about the pleco up there on the wall. I mean, that that is my <laughs> logo right there. So let's talk about specifically up to your left um let's talk about the albino plate that you got going on up there because the art and i just want to say firsthand i wasn't sure how this whole thing was going to be turning out um when you wanted to start doing the studio thing and i was just like okay i'm excited about it because i know i was excited when i did this studio part so i'm really stoked to see what else you plan on adding to it what you have going on right now uh, i'm sure i'm speaking on behalf of everybody it looks really really nice um cool. and i absolutely love that uh both of those uh, that you have up there, but specifically the albino. Yeah, I've uh, been really excited about this. Uh, this year, you know, with the changes at the beginning of the year of, um, you know, setting up goals for the upcoming year, I decided I wanted to try to class up and do a little bit nicer of a studio, um, looking for, um, you know, just a little bit more of a, a chill aspect. And uh, I love plecos and fish and I love art and I just always wasn't really happy with my live stream backdrop you know the fish tanks just never never did look good you know they were always just blared out 
So I started ordering stuff a couple weeks ago, and um, I got some stuff in today. I got some art in today from Priscilla, but I did not have enough time to uh, get it hung up. But yeah, these, um, oh, they are a print on, um, gosh, what's that stuff called? What's that material called? I can't even think of what the material is. It's like a, uh, it's a print that's on just a little wooden frame and I'm drawing a blank. But anyhow, I went ahead and I spent a little bit of money on those two pieces right there because I really like Plecos. And then I went to my LFS and I got all kinds of little knickknack things like this little thing right here is really cool it's like a little um music box it's made out of brass from like the 1940s and it's got some fish on it and it still works and you could really technically hang it up and turn it on and it will spin the fish will swim around you know and um then like this lamp back here whenever i was down in missouri for the holidays i made this for my grandparents when i was in the seventh grade and I've got a really nice lampshade on order for it. Um, I'm going to fill in these, this empty space here with some Priscilla and then this empty space over here with some Priscilla. And uh, I don't know much about what I'm going to do down here yet, but then I also got this little salt lamp down here. So I'm really smelling good up in here right now. So I'm really excited about it. I'm still dialing it in tomorrow night's live stream. Um, we'll uh, probably have a lot more of it done. But every day when something comes in, I set it up and look at it and turn everything on to make sure I got my lighting right. And I think it's starting to look good. Yeah, it looks good, man. So why don't you take us right into the topic? Um, kind of start out with what you're keeping right now, because I'm curious to know what, what shrimp you're keeping kind of right now, what their ecosystems look like. Right. Um, Right now, <coughs> I'm keeping a couple of different grades of uh, your uh, red cherry shrimp. I've got one that's like a, um, a fire red grade. So um, on the fire reds, you know, lots of times their legs will be red as well. And they're, they're really bright red in the color. Um, so I've got a line of those that I'm keeping. And then I've got a just a standard, I would say, cherry shrimp line, um, uh, the reds. And then I've got a fantasy blue dream line um, that's an import. Um, and then I've got a black line of shrimp that, you know, a lot of people that I've shown say that they kind of look like a black rose. But it's a line that I kind of, I didn't really necessarily create it but I've worked on it for the last couple of years to get them down to where they're pretty much a solid black line. And uh, they look a lot like a black rose, I would say. And um, I don't hardly even have to cull that, that colony anymore. And I've got them spread out, but then, <coughs> excuse me. I also, um, through all the uh, cullings and different things like that, I also got some really weird like golden backs, like some chocolate ones that had some golden backs and some tiger stripes. And I threw all those into a tank that's kind of like a, a Skittles tank, I guess you would say. So there's some blues and some purples and some yellows and oranges and just all kinds of different colors. And it's more of a, a fun tank than anything. But um, a lot of my setups are different. Um, like the fire red cherry shrimp, I've got those in a breeding for profit tank. And, um, you know, uh, what I found when I first started keeping these shrimp that um, the neocaridinas are really bulletproof, like people say, you know, um, they adapt to numerous types of water parameters. But one thing that I found with my water chemistry when I started keeping them was that I had to add some crushed coral because. They were having troubles. Um, oh, they were having troubles um, getting rid of their shells. I drew a blank there too. Like, um, you know, like I noticed that I was losing some every once in a while whenever they were getting rid of their shells. And I 
asked around and they was like, oh, just add some crushed coral and that really zoned it in. So in pretty much every setup I've got, I've got to have some crushed coral in it. But, you know, I've got some shrimp on sand. I've got some shrimp on, um, you know, like a, a fluval stratum. And um, then I've got some on uh, gravel, you know. I like to split my colonies up, especially after I get them going really good. That way I can sustain the colony if this tank was to crash or something like that. But, yeah, that's pretty much the, you know, and I've got one tank that's got uh, crystal shrimp in it, which is the Caradina. But um, other than that, that's pretty much all my shrimp. I, I've got them all over, like, like eight different tanks i've got them spread out i have no words tonight candy <laughs> at all so yeah that was great um i mean it sounds like uh, you're definitely enjoying the, the shrimp the shrimp hobby uh, i know a lot of us do and and again anybody that knows me well enough i've been keeping shrimp for a long time is actually one of the most profitable systems i had that was less than a 12 it was basically a less than a one cubic foot. It was back when Fluval really started designing and incorporating a lot of their nano systems. So that was the EBI or the EBI. Um, and it had like an internal filter that came with it and the substrate and all of that. Uh, but I had different lineage and different grades of uh, cherries. So what we actively run now uh, based on shrimp tanks is I keep everything uh, based on, uh, you know, if I can, if I can obtain it, um, like, for instance, one of my favorites right now uh, that I've been working with for about two years, and that is the Neocaridinia heteropoda. So the heteropoda is just kind of more or less a fancy way of saying a derivative from a wild specimen, a wild strain, um, which in my experience, in my opinion, if you work that lineage long enough, it's much better uh, from the get-go, and you want to maintain um, that lineage. So what I do is I don't incorporate other lineage um, and we'll talk a little bit about that later on, possibly, uh, or in a different topic. But when you're going back to the black rose, a lot of those can be derived off from even your higher, like even your fire red or your carbon, really, where you can start seeing some of those chocolate uh, strains and that kind of stuff. So it can get pretty complex, but there's a lot of literature out there. But you just have to be careful in the sources that you're obtaining them from, because not all the time that they're going to breed true but i can say with a heteropoda as long as you work the lineage um in the car in the really strain specifically that one um over you know two or three years once you work through those generations um within four to five months after obtaining a group of 10 i literally over 700 shrimp uh and most people would be like how can you get to that point and that is just because it really comes down to experience. So the one main system that I had, I was changing about 70% water daily out of that system. So the key is consistency while maintaining the appropriate calcium. And that's kind of what we we're talking about a little bit earlier as far as failed molts. So uh, we'll get into disease and kind of some preventative measures and stuff like that. But it, failed molts can be a telltale sign that you have uh, calcium deficiency within the water column itself. And I would agree with Jeff uh, 100% of what he's talking about. Uh, a good uh, source that I have found personally through the years, not only with shrimp, but other species, a uh, good buffer uh, to maintain the appropriate amount of calcium is crushed coral versus using like um, um, cuttle bone or other sources, um, eggshells. I, I just find that it lasts and it lasts a very, very long time. Um, yeah, I've had systems still running for years with crushed coral. And my rule of thumb is one pound of crushed coral per 10 gallons of water based on our municipal water source. But we already have a lot of good mineral content and a lot of good calcium already out of our municipal water source. So I do get it. If you're running on a different type of system. Uh, maybe you have to remineralize your water and that kind of stuff. Uh, so we are fortunate enough here with our source that it's, it's superb, superior and ideal when it comes to shrimp. Uh, I've been keeping and maintaining shrimp for almost 14 years, and we've seen a steady decline in our market uh, with shrimp. Probably, I would say, back in about uh, 2000, I would say about 2010, um, up until about two years ago, uh, where it was it peaked, and then it kind of just slowly started uh, dipping. And now we're starting to see a lot more trends. And again, it's all based on location, but I can tell you here in our market, what I've seen, uh, now we have a lot more options because you start seeing a lot more 
uh, variety, a lot different type of color morphs. The majority of the shrimp I can tell you now that are bred in the home aquaria are going to be your Neocaridinia devidae. So, um, and then it kind of goes from there, but the majority of them, unless you know for certain where they came from, uh, you can almost always uh, anticipate they're, that they're going to be uh, a devidae. Um, based on that, in and it's just basically a different color morph um, off from that. So the ones that I keep that I personally enjoy the most is the Carver really is a really, really stunning one. Like I said, you do have to uh, work with the lineage, and once you kind of start getting the lineage going, um, you can start maintaining and start getting some of those um, more pure lineage uh, in consistencies with the, with the actual really strain. Uh, of course, I've kept cherries. Um, I've kept uh, orange, you know, snowballs. Um, Black Rose, uh, Blue Dreams, Fantasy Blue Dream. Fantasy Blue is just basically a fancy way of saying when you hear the word Fantasy Blue or Fantasy Blue Dream or Fantasy Shrimp, it's really just saying that there's inconsistencies as far as how they actually breed true. So if you see where somebody is actually classified as a Fantasy Blue Shrimp or a Fantasy Blue Dream Shrimp, chances are it's most likely classified that way because they're not going to always throw true to get those, you know, those nice blues that you're looking for. Whereas if it's a true um, blue dream lineage and then, you know, and you can work that lineage over time, but it does take um, sometimes several years to, to eventually work that lineage to get it right. Uh, that's why I would always recommend for me, if I'm going to go, go to a reputable source, somebody you know has been working the lineage, especially in home aquaria, uh, where things have been captively raised, captively conditioned, that kind of stuff. Um, and one of the things I do want to also uh, talk about as far as water chemistry. So we talked a little bit as far as like shrimp. I know that Jeff talked about a little, little bit as far as shrimp setup. Um, we will get to kind of the way I set up systems. And I am curious a little bit more as far as kind of what, what uh, your ecosystem looks like, Jeff. And if you can kind of walk us through maybe some of those numbers, if you know um that you may be running in that system because i do feel that it's important for people to know when it comes to like hardness and that kind of stuff and if you don't know that's completely understandable because i know that you have different systems and if you haven't checked in a while um you know it, if you don't if you don't uh, have it that's completely fine but just kind of go a little bit more if you don't care and to kind of when you would set up a, a system kind of like what size aquarium and that kind of thing right a couple of things i want to touch on real quick um it was pretty interesting that you brought up um, the black rose coming from like some of your uh, fire red lines because the first fire reds that I ordered um, were just gorgeous, but there was one solid black, shiny, beautiful female in there with them. And that is where I derived all of my black shrimp from was that one black shrimp. I kept on, I pulled it out from the the original colony and they never you know it, it's kind of weird because that made me kind of think well are these not really a true line but they have my fire reds have always thrown really true ever since i got them i hardly ever have to call them and then as far as the uh, fantasy blue dreams come what i was told whenever i got these is um they come from a chocolate line as well and um they throw, they're like a blue dream, but they throw really darker colors. Mine is a pretty straight line. I mean, they pretty much look like a bunch of twins. And I'm only on like probably the second or third generation. But um, <coughs> anyhow, as far as water chemistry goes, I'm one of those that is really bad. Unless I'm setting up a new tank, I hardly ever check my water parameters. The two times that I check my water parameters is whenever I notice something weird that's going on in one of the tanks. And I don't recommend this to new hobbyists at all. You know, it's really a good idea to um, check your water parameters. But on new setups, I check all my water parameters. And then whenever I see something that's going a little weird, um, about the only number that I know uh, pretty much stays the same is um, I've got a real neutral, like, seven 7.2 ph straight out of the tap and um other than that you know i on every one of my shrimp tanks i do have a rock pile and the biggest 
reason why I do that is because I found that it really works for me. Like I get a lot more, um, I get a lot more yield out of the babies um, than I did before I started doing a rock pile. The reason why I started doing a rock pile is because I just wasn't having very many babies. And uh, I started asking around and, you know, I started seeing people doing rock piles and, you know, rock piles. Another thing is you're adding more surface area into your tank for like your biofilms and your um, your algaes and stuff like that to build up um, all my shrimp tanks. I only keep one uh, one glass clean and it's fairly clean you know i mean when i see it starting to get pretty dingy i'll scrape it off where i can have a viewing panel but i leave the rest uh to go um i've got three tanks that are shrimp only and i use matten filters in those actually i've got four tanks that are shrimp only uh, my one caradina tank as well but i like the matten filters um, the biggest reason why is because there's a great big large mass of that foam for all the goodies for them to get up and graze on that matten filter. Um, it works really good. Um, it doesn't take up very much room in the tank. Um, I, I have that in like three of my tanks. Um, but a rock pile in every one of them. And then I started out with like <clears throat> excuse me i started out with uh using mosses like uh your christmas moss or your standard java moss and i didn't end up really liking those all that much so i started switching it up like i've got one um my black rose tank has some wasser tang in it that's doing really good and it's got a little bit of uh naha grass in it but for the most part, in all the other shrimp tanks, I've got Naha grass in it, um, excluding the one that's like the Skittles tank. It's in a planted aquarium, so I don't have any Naha grass in there. But um, what I like about having some kind of um, vegetation in there, whether it be a moss or Naha grass, is all the food particles that get up into the water column kind of get stuck on that stuff. And um, they get up in it and they just graze on it, you know, so they don't have any problems getting fed. Um, the things that I like about the shrimp only tanks is I can focus on their diets. You know, I don't have to worry about other stuff coming in and gobbling up all the food. I can specifically feed these shrimp whatever I want to feed them. So if I want to work around with some different diets, um, I can. You know, like here the last week or so, I've been feeding the shrimp only tanks some flakes. And I had never done that before, and they really love them. You know, I've got a couple of different type of flakes that I've been feeding them. and um, But, yeah, every every one of the tanks that I have a rock pile in, every single one of them, um, I, I feel like that's a, kind of a must to have more babies, you know have a bigger yield right on so yeah i mean that's all excellent and great feedback for sure it's definitely something that's been incorporated for a long time within the the shrimp community um just kind of when you think about it from a logical point of view i mean it only makes sense uh especially if you're trying to incorporate other things within the ecosystem and you guys can check out the talk that we did here last week uh friday a little bit more about that but um, I know for me, the first thing that I do, that I would advise, uh, I've helped a lot of people locally through the years, uh, especially young youth, uh, classrooms and that kind of thing. When it comes to incorporating a system that's practical within an office space, uh, that kind of stuff. And I always advise dwarf shrimp, neocaridina shrimp, they're much hardier uh, in that kind of thing. So I would say a 10 gallon, you can definitely get by with a five and a half gallon, but a 10 gallon, if you're able to do it, you can definitely do a cube style if you wanted to, uh, but to keep it on the cheap, because now we have the dollar per gallon sales going on that have been going on the last, uh, you know, three years or so, that it's something that I would advise people to take advantage of. You know, I love Aquion tanks. Uh, I think that they do absolutely phenomenal. They last a long time, the seals are good. Uh, so for 10 bucks, you know, there for a tank, Get yourself um, 
you know, a, a basic and cheap substrate. And what I mean by that is just not like a fine powder substrate. Uh, you don't have to use like pool filter sand uh, or anything like that, but try to keep it on the cheap. I mean, you can go to pretty much anywhere and obtain a black gravel substrate. And my tip would be that I don't see a lot of people do is to transition. Um, so what I mean by that is have a dark substrate and transition that with a white substrate. And you can supplement the white substrate if you introduce the crushed coral as your white. And the reason that is shrimp, along with other specimens, not just shrimp or inverts, uh, but fish and, and so forth, they, they do enjoy um, having the, the adaptation when it comes to transitioning between substrates and their overall surrounding. It, it makes them feel comfortable. If you've ever watched shrimp and the way that they change color based on um, certain layers that they may go to, based on certain areas within the aquarium, that kind of stuff. So I would recommend having at least a portion of that. Uh, so the way I would do it is have the dark towards the front viewing panel and the white towards the back. Or if you, because I keep my tanks this way, like long ways, but if you're going to do it like a display tank, as most would do uh, this this way, then I would have a, the white kind of back and you can incorporate that into, uh, I mean, you can really use your, uh, your imagination um, when it comes to that and create almost like, um, like a, an infinity effect where, you know, uh, things go, if you're going to end up aquascaping or something like that. Uh, I think you guys kind of get what I'm talking about. Hopefully that, that somewhat makes sense. So instead for me using rock piles, the reason that it is easier to fetch them out, I find, um, by not using rock piles. So me personally, I don't use rock piles. Um, I have used them in the past, but what I use to supplement that would be using spawning mops. And the reason that is that most of the systems that I do here aren't for display purposes. They're for providing to other hobbyists. And you can still get really good yields by doing it this way. Instead of using the rock piles, the shrimp will find them way their way in there. I think I did talk about it last week. Uh, something I've never seen anybody out ever mention or ever use. I'm not saying I'm the one that invented the wheel, but I will say that it's something that it, through, you know, 20 plus years in the hobby, I've never personally ever heard anybody say or ever use this specific idea. And that's when the shrimp get into the spawning mop, you take a top or a net and you can go ahead and carefully raise it all up and then transfer them over so you have that redundancy in place where they can grow out and that kind of stuff. And you will literally find um, a ton of shrimp packed into that because of the biofilm in that that will build up and the bacteria that will build up on the sponge filters. Um, I would say the other thing is, too, you don't need a ton of airflow uh, for these type of shrimp in a specific aquarium. But you do want to be careful with dead zones um, when it comes to that. What I mean by dead zones in an aquarium is to make sure that you have no dead spots where you're dealing with um certain uh anaerobic issues and that kind of stuff so um where you know some of that bacteria can cause some long-term effects and issues uh if you aren't maintaining uh, the appropriate water chemistry and that that goes not only for shrimp but also other ones because you will find where shrimp can start developing some bacterial issues um there's there's different types of parasites that can happen but for the most part if you get them from a good uh, source that have, um, you know, put the time into it and and have been dealing with it for a period of time, not like six months, but for four, five, six years, uh, then I would recommend that you always go to a source um, that really has proven themselves when it comes to that. Because you may not notice some of those issues up front, uh, but long term, I've noticed issues when I got them from other sources uh, years back. And, you know, the first three, four, five months, things would be going fine. And all of a sudden I'll start seeing some some issues there uh, within that. And it wasn't a water chemistry issue. It was definitely more of a deficiency um, in lack of uh, genetics when it came to the shrimp and as far as being hardy. Shrimp shrimp typically with the Neocaridina, you can find them to live anywhere between two and four years. Um, I've had Neocaridinas literally the size, I've had females about that big um, and uh, we won't talk too much as far as like grading of shrimp uh, when it comes to competitive reasons, because that's not why I'm in it. I just enjoy um, looking at shrimp uh, just from the standpoint. I, I think they're really a good contributor to an ecosystem uh, and they do well with a lot of different nano species if you incorporate that right. I did see a question here earlier 
specifically with Corridors. So whether if you're talking about Corridors or Aspidoras, um, that kind of thing, uh, you could potentially get by with it. Just know a lot of those uh, species do tend to be a little bit more predatorial, especially in the evening. But you always have to keep in mind different levels and stages for what your ecosystem is. So what I mean by that is Corridors a lot of times will stay towards the bottom. However, uh, depending on what species it is in the type of activity and how in there's a lot of variables that go into there because you might find one group of fish uh, that somebody has the exact same species with person A. You go to person B's house and you're like, I never see these fish. Maybe person A is more active around those fish. Maybe they've had them longer. Maybe their water chemistry is a little bit different, that kind of thing. Um, so if they have... Um, it, it isn't necessarily the way I would look at it from a psychological point of view when it comes to fish. Um, but I, I think a lot of times people think that they're going after it um, because that's just what they want to do. Oftentimes they, they can confuse, especially small shrimp, um, as some type of food particle. So you just got to kind of factor in, you know, how you're feeding, what you're feeding. And that will kind of tie into the next thing I want to talk about. Um, now, as far as heat, and I'll wrap this up, you shouldn't ever have to put a heater in any shrimp tank uh, for the most part. I, I definitely would advise against it. If you can maintain your Neocaridina shrimp tanks anywhere between 68 and 73, you'll be golden. I find the sweet spot for breeding uh, most uh, lineage of the Neos uh, right around that 71 to 73 mark. You'll find it very, very successful. Um, I can almost back that up with a hundred percent certainty, just because I've been dealing with many different lineages over the years, um, and I always find that that sweet spot for me, if I can maintain every one of my shrimp systems at seventy-two, that is just like golden to me. Um, so, I want to know your thoughts on it. Uh, why don't we talk a little bit of, about food, yeah. and I want to know kind of what you feed um, when it comes to foods. Right. First, I want to get to this question right here because it ties into some stuff that I was thinking about talking about. Um, Lumpy Dog says, for the newbies, talk about the obstacles of adding shrimp to a newly set up tank. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Lumpy Dog. Uh, that is a good question because we really haven't touched on that too much. But really, you do have to cycle a tank kind of like you do with fish. You know, it has to go through the nitrogen cycle and all that kind of stuff. But more importantly, you want to get some biofilm built up in the tank before you put them in there. Because, you know, they can't just live off of the food that we feed them alone. They have to have some different, um, you know, stuff built up in the tank to graze on. And um, I have found that my tanks that have been set up longer take off and do better. Um, especially, you know, because these things they're going to breed. They are. And those babies, when they are born, they're going to need all the good stuff to, uh, to eat in order to survive. Um, one thing that I did learn early on in the hobby, as far as shrimp keeping comes, is um, you really need to keep it simple as possible. Because if you start listening to everyone out there in the internet, you'll do things like I bought fluval stratum. I thought that neocaridina shrimp had to have fluval stratum, and they don't. Fluval stratum is a buffered type of substrate that over time changes your pH. And neocaridina shrimp, they can adjust to all kinds of different parameters. So it's not like I was really hurting them, but I didn't have to go out there and buy that stuff. Um, you know, sand, like Jeremy was saying earlier, sand or gravel or a white and a dark, you know, um, that that will do just fine. Um, I thought that you had to have all kinds of different things in the tank. You know, I thought you had to have choa wood. You don't have to, but they do like it. They graze on it. Um, I thought that you had to have Malaysian or not Malaysian, but, you know, your, your leaves, you know. Uh, you don't have to, but... It doesn't hurt. It, it's a big surface that builds up biofilm, and they also eat it as well, so you wouldn't have to feed your shrimp as much. You know, like a shrimp tank, you could, you could run off from it for a long vacation and not have to worry at all if you have some leaf litter and some different types of wood and stuff like that in there, and, you know. But, um, yeah, as far as um, food goes... 
I never did ever feed my shrimp every day and I don't recommend it. I mean, I've heard of some people doing it, but they don't really have to. I mean, all of my tanks have all kinds of stuff in there, like what I just talked about, you know, and um, they just graze on all the little stuff that's built up in your tank and you don't have to feed them. I've heard of people feeding them once a week. I tend to feed mine once every three to four days, you know, um, something like that. Um, I feed mine a varied diet. Like um, I do feed them some vegetables. Like I'll put, um, you know, like a cucumber in there every once in a while or, you know, a zucchini every once in a while. Green beans on green beans day, you know, I'll put some green beans in there and they love that stuff. Um, I also feed, um, North Finn kelp wafers and they really love that stuff. Um, then, like I said earlier, I've been feeding some, um, oh, some flake food to them here lately. Um, and they really, they really like it too. Um, I've never tried to be real specific with their diet, you know, to try to, gain a certain color or, um, you know, make them mega big or anything like that. I've just always on all my fish and all my plecos and all my shrimp, I vary their diet. You know, I don't always feed them the same thing. And um, none of, I don't have any picky eaters at all in my fish room. And I think, you know, I don't know if you can really scientifically prove it, but I feel like that's the reason why I don't have anything that's picky is because I just vary their diet all the time. Ever since they were babies, they've had different foods to eat and they've never picked at it and never been picky and said, no, we're not going to eat this. Um, but just know that you don't have to feed them every day. You don't, you know, you don't want to feed them every day is the way that I feel. And, um, you know, every three or four days is totally fine, especially an established tank. You know, maybe a new tank, feed them every other day for a while, you know, um, lightly, you know. That's another thing. You don't want to overfeed them because that's when other uh, pestilent stuff starts kicking in. And, um, you know, you, you can create uh, a lot more problems if you're if you're not careful if you overfeed. So hopefully I didn't ramble too much there, but... No, not at all. I mean, that was all great uh, insight and feedback because you're just you're telling people what you've done and what has worked for you. Exactly. And I would think that we both agree. Anything that anything that we say here uh, through this channel is really to provide a little bit of insight. And it really is up to um, those individuals uh, as the Aquarius to take it upon themselves to really learn to see what works within their own ecosystem. So, you know, I never want to try to um deviate anybody away personally from what they're doing if it's not broke why fix it uh, but again if you always do what you, you've done you're going to get what you always got kind of thing too so if you constantly have issues with failed molts or bacterial issues and obviously it's something that's an aquarius that you're doing wrong um you know and and that's where you got to kind of accept the fact and not live in denial you know i i've had now just from being on youtube i've had a lot of people reach out to me over the last uh, two plus years now, I've actually put out video content. They'll finally come to me a uh, year down the road, months after uh, the road, and wondering why they're being unsuccessful. And really, to me, uh, going back to when you're setting up any ecosystem, numbers don't lie as long as you know how to read the test. That's why we have them. Way we talk about the nitrogen cycle. As long as you can maintain zero ammonia, zero nitrite. My recommendation always is a minimum of five, ten, or five parts per million when it comes to nitrates, up to 35 parts per million. The reason that is, when I know I'm in that 5 to 10 zone, up to 35 zone. 35 is now getting to the point where that tells me, hey, there might be some influx here. I need to look at, uh, you know, uh, maintaining whatever it is that's going on, that kind of thing. So when I find if you ever just maintain, and I would have a very, very difficult time even from a scientific point of view, to maintain uh, zero nitrates. I can almost guarantee you any municipal source that you find, unless you're using straight up um, reverse osmosis water and then remineralizing, that's kind of a whole nother conversation. 
Uh, but it's good to have a lot of those tools on hand as well. So there is different remineralizers. You can definitely re remineralize it with the appropriate buffer uh, when you're talking specifically about Neos. Same thing if you're talking about Caridina shrimp. And we'll probably talk about Caridina shrimp in the future if you guys definitely enjoy this. And if you do enjoy it, they tell us here on YouTube to make sure that you guys like. Um, so if you guys are watching this in the replay, uh, it's just one of those things I feel a little uh, weird to even ask. Or even mention, but uh, they tell us on YouTube it's it's a good thing to go ahead and hit the like button to let us know that you enjoy it. And if you don't, that's completely understandable as well. And we hope that you definitely enjoy something maybe different in the future. There is polls um, here on the channel. I don't believe uh, we scheduled this late in the afternoon earlier today. So there isn't a poll, to my understanding, unless Jeff did one, um, when it comes to that. I know Jeff... Um, was more used to the poll thing than than I was. And I think it's a great tool. I really enjoy it. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. If you guys are aware of what I'm talking about, just put hashtag poll here in the chat to let me know if you guys checked out the last poll that was going on. That kind of is what gave us the idea into this week's topic. And then going forward, we kind of leave it up to the viewers of the channel to ensure that the, you know, the whoever the majority is on that poll will uh, essentially go with, you know, whatever topic that is that you guys want to talk about. Because I know for both Jeff and I, we could sit here and talk just about anything fish keeping related. And I would say most of us here, uh, even in chat, could just nerd out about anything fish related because that's just what we do here in the fish community. Um, now, as far as food, so I use, again, uh, everything that you mentioned, um, not that I use every single manufacturer, but as far as the the dietary and appropriate requirements, something I always preach on, diet confusion, skip feeding, that kind of stuff. The same thing I apply, I always practice what I preach. So for me, if I'm feeding a shrimp tank, it's about once a week. Um, and most of the time you can actually get by by maybe even feeding once every two weeks once you really, really get a solid system set up. And that might take you a couple of years once you build up a lot of good uh, beneficial bacteria in that system, a lot of um, you know microbacterium and that kind of thing. Uh, and especially if they have a matten filter or a Hamburg matten style filter, which is like basically covering up one side of the tank kind of deal. Uh, those work phenomenally well because of the surface area. And Jeff already made mention of that. Um, now talking a little bit about filtration. Uh, there isn't much more I'm going to talk as far as foods because I think everything was already really touched on uh, there. So let's kind of go into the filtration aspect. My recommendation with filters because of the very small fry. Um, if you can, if you feel comfortable doing it, and I would always advise doing it, uh, personally would be using a sponge filter of some sort. You can also use a old box style filter as well, but why I like sponge filters or a matten filter, however you want to do it, is the fact that you get the appropriate turnover rate and depending on how you lay it out, of course, and the amount of flow to keep, keep everything filtering through and shrimp love it. Um, it's actually one of my favorite things to see in a shrimp tank, especially in a matten uh, filters type tank incorporated into that. When you look at that back wall, and if you have a really, really established colony of shrimp, it looks absolutely gorgeous to me. Um, if you have like a darker substrate, um, and then even with that, that transition of a lighter substrate, like a crushed coral or whatever the case might be, and you look at that back wall on a matten filter and you see all of these really really just brilliant red or blue um you know of course the the blacks can be a bit difficult to um to to see sometimes because they don't stick out as much of course on a black matten filter but there is different color matten filters that you can get as well um but uh, the most i think people are familiar with is probably the black uh type you know color matten filter so blues reds um greens any any type of uh, neo that that really can pop um and they'll just graze on that all day long and i just love watching it so why don't you tell me a little bit jeff uh kind of filtration wise what you use yeah on um, most of my tanks i have um oh sponge filters i do have a couple of the tanks that have a sponge and a hang on the back but whenever you do a hang on the back, you got to make for sure and have a sponge intake. And um, whenever you're talking about sponges, you know, because um, I 
you know, the first couple of mat and filters that I got, I purchased online and they're a little pricey. Um, but I also have ordered my own foam before. And what you got to be careful of is the density of foam. Um, make sure and do your research because if you get too open cell of a foam, your babies will get inside there and get stuck and trapped and everything and you can't get out. And that's the same way with the sponge filters because um, there's some sponge filters out there that the cells are really open as well. There's a number. I can't ever remember what that number is called, but foam, actually, there's a scientific scientific thing going on with it where you know there's all kinds of different densities of foams uh your closed foams um they're going to clog up a lot sooner you're going to have to do more maintenance on them but that's what you got to do for shrimp because those little shrimplets are tiny and um so i would say i think priscilla is right she's saying ppi it's something close to that but um you've got to Really do your research if you are going to go out there on a limb and build your own mat and filter because you can build your own mat and filter and it is a lot cheaper. You go to the hardware store, you get you some PVC pipe and you get you a 90 degree elbow and you get you um, another little piece and cut it off at a 45 and, um, you know, get you a, a, um, a stone and, you know, you've got your uptake there and everything and um, just don't make the mistake of getting too open cell of a foam because those little babies will get in there. But so I would say the three different types of filtration that I use is the uh, matten filters, the sponge filters, and then on some of my larger tanks, I do have some hang on the backs. But if you do do a hang on the back, you've got to have a sponge intake filter for sure to keep from getting those little babies up in your uh, hang on the back. <laughs> Mr. B says, did Jeff say our holes are the wrong size? I probably did. <laughs> uh, welcome, everybody that's coming into the stream. I know we've got uh, a rush of people over the last five minutes, so I'd like to thank everybody that showed up for this stream and all the new people coming in. Uh, when me and Jeremy get to talking on these talks and everything, we get to go on for a ways, and it's kind of hard to say hi to everybody, but we really do appreciate each and every one of you guys that have came in tonight. And uh, thanks for stopping by, and hello, and welcome, all that kind of good stuff. Absolutely. Um, you did a phenomenal job there in, in explaining that entire process. So as far as the porosity, and, and they already uh, mentioned it in here when you're talking about the specific pores per inch. Um, so, yes, again, that, that is definitely a, a very um, uh, practical thing um, and a very smart thing to look like look at so i'm happy that you did address that because not only with shrimp but also if you're using that you know in some type of uh fry system as well so that those are definitely factors that uh, um you know to, to take into account so i'm glad that you addressed that uh let's see what we got going on here in chat we got joseph j aquatics how you doing buddy always nice seeing you here in the chat for the matten filter a minimum of 35 uh, PPI is recommended. The higher the PPI, the denser the foam, less water flow. Yep. So it just kind of depends on, again, factors, how much flow through rate and that kind of thing that you have going on there as well. So there's always pros and cons to just about every filtration system. I just, I, I don't use a ton of matten filters, but I couldn't agree with Jeff more as he already made mention of that. You can definitely find them on Amazon, eBay. You can get an entire sheet of it, um, you know, for about 13 bucks with free shipping. Well, and again, also, it's not, it's not going to be the highest quality, but I run them in a lot of my, and I shouldn't say a lot, but a few of my systems and I've had no issues at all. You know, and, so. and also another thing that you got to watch out for is, you know, your typical sponge filter. If you're not careful, you, you know, there's some of those that are pretty open foam too. And, um, some of those, the PPI is really high, you know, and, uh, it might not be a bad idea to go ahead and, Whenever you're getting a sponge filter, check that number. You know, I'm sure it's got to be somewhere in there, you know, because, you know, the more closed the foam is, the sooner it's going to get clogged up, the less the flow is going to be. But shrimp don't require a lot of flow, so it doesn't matter. It's just pretty much you just don't want the babies to get into it. And it can happen on a regular old sponge filter, too, you know, if you're. If you found a cheap 
sponge filter on Amazon and you get it in and you just throw it in the tank, it might be the wrong PPI. Yeah. So let's see here. Um, I'm going to pop over here to chat. So again, if we miss anybody, um, thank you so much for popping in here. We definitely appreciate it. Um, it's great to see that we have, you know, 34 uh, currently uh, active here in in the um, watching it uh, live. So we definitely are very appreciative of that. Uh, all right. So don't believe I missed anything. But if I did, just go ahead and, and put it back there into chat. Do you see anything at all? <laughs> I see Daryl for the first time tonight. I've not paid a whole lot of attention to the chat, which I, um, and then I seen Joseph just now pop in. So glad to see those guys. And Rack, yep. nice to see you. And I've seen Jamie a few times, but I've never got to see say hi to Jamie. And then there we got uh, Maple Street's wife Vanessa is in the chat. Johan is here. What's up? So it's nice to see a lot yeah. of familiar faces here. I'm surprised, Jamie. They they haven't been having to put him in timeout tonight. There's Charlie. I didn't even see Charlie here. Oh, Charlie's in the house. How you doing, buddy? Yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. HD, uh, we got Jesse here. Said is Jeremy's head usually uh, <laughs> this clean? So yes, you guys, it is always this clean. I've been doing the same cut for probably better part of the last. This is date me now. I would say probably well over 15, 17 years now. Um, I've probably been doing the exact same uh, cut. So, yeah. Yeah, I really need to get on mine. Whoa, we got Dank Tanks in the house. How you doing? What is up, Dank? Mr. Dank, E Tanky. <laughs> it's inside yeah, joke. Yeah, Danky Tanky. <laughs> Uh, Maple Street Aquatics brings up a pretty good point. He says, nice turnout for 85 subscribers. Quality. Yeah. Thanks, thanks a lot, buddy. I appreciate that. Kind words. Well, I I, I want to just give my gratitude again. I always say this. There's never enough appreciation that we can give to the people uh, that share this out. And I know a lot of that has to do to the fact that people, uh, you know, enjoy the content at one point point or another and and i sure i'm speaking on behalf of both of us we can never give enough thanks to that you know we're definitely both very appreciative i know i am uh and oftentimes it doesn't come out or conveyed always in the appropriate manner but again i know i've been we've both been around in the community for a long time i know myself i've been around in the community a long time um and i don't think we give enough thanks for that so again anybody that shares it um will try to again as we get into a rhythm, uh, start scheduling these. Like right after this is done, we'll try to get it in the next day or so uh, scheduled, you know, next week, at least have something there so we can start kind of sharing it out. Um, but yeah, so, all right. Another thing that, uh, you know, I like to talk about too is, you know, you guys that show up for the show are the ones that makes the show. I mean, you guys keep on showing up and we'll keep on talking and pam says that she shared it out tonight while she was waiting for jeffro to get done in the bathroom man yep i i felt like going to the bathroom whenever i seen what happened <laughs> uh but yeah uh me and jeremy we really didn't uh we really didn't talk all that much today and um I know that my day just was a blur. It was a blur. And I wish that I could have got a little more done on my studio because Priscilla sent me some really awesome artwork today. Like this one right here is my favorite. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's like an L183 Starlight Pleco. And I'm absolutely in love with that. She does such a good job. So I've got a place picked out for it. I've got the frames already so yeah gives me something to do i'm gonna keep on plugging at it so it looks like we got about what about eight more minutes or yeah oh we got about four more minutes yeah 
So anybody got any kind of questions? I know we didn't get into a question part of it, but does anybody have any questions? Uh, we've got less than five minutes here. Um, if anybody has any questions about shrimp, yada, 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 be more than healthy or more than happy. I don't know what healthy even means. Do you know what healthy means, Jeremy? <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy is very healthy whenever it comes to shrimp. Lumpy Dog brings up a really good point. He says, holy smokes, that was a fast hour. It really was. It really was. Dank Tank says, mix breeding shrimp for different colors. Well, maybe we could bring that up in a different stream one of these days. We could make that a topic because that one, we could go on for hours on that. Uh, Mr. B says, question, did you paint the rest of the walls, Jeff? I painted half of my living room this color, and then I still have not. I think I said last weekend I would do it this weekend, but I've got like three videos to make this weekend, so I don't know that I'm going to get it out this weekend. Help means it was Jeff wrote up. <laughs> yeah, helpy means, yeah, I did Jeff wrote it up, didn't I, Pam? Uh, yeah. I don't think Jamie got a timeout. Um, <coughs> I didn't get a timeout. So I no, I, he didn't. I think it was earlier. I think Jamie maybe was lurking. So, yeah, I think it was just giving you a hard time. Uh, <laughs> let's see. So it looks like Joseph. Hold on. I missed something here from JH. Uh, finally selling my yellow uh, Caradina shrimp and my blue bolts. Uh, running out of room. Nice, man. Right on. Congratulations. Uh, let's see. I think that catches us up. Cool. That that I, actually I was um, – let us know right now, uh, or if you guys happen to get to this point in the replay, I would love to know just down in the comments um, if you've watched it, if you are specifically watching this uh, not only live but in the replay if you actually watch the entire thing. Um, we definitely enjoy continuing uh, the chit chat with you guys um, after the video has been processed and uploaded. So – Shelby um, Ray has a good question. Yeah. Do the Skittles slash coal tanks revert back to the wild brown form? I have had some that do, and I've got this one female that is just the most Hershey's chocolate, beautiful, shiny specimen. I mean, even her legs are chocolate, and she only shows up every once in a while. You know, she gets buried and then she, it's a planted, a heavy planted aquarium and she just disappears. Uh, if you go back far enough on my Instagram, probably maybe four or five months ago, I put a short little video clip of her that was a real nice clip. And, um, but for the most part, mine revert back to those, uh, darker browns that have like a golden back on them and stuff that's uh it, it's you you never know what you're gonna see on a feeding night especially if you haven't fed them for like five or six days and then just all the shrimp come from out of nowhere and uh it's pretty cool right on. i would say that's the top that i think wraps it up why don't you go ahead and again um I personally want to thank everybody for joining us for this second week now in a row of uh, this new channel. So I'm excited to see what happens in the future. So with that being said, again, I want to thank everybody for showing up. I'm going to let Jeff go ahead and close things out. Yeah, if you guys haven't voted on the poll, uh, what we've been doing is last week and this week we've been running a poll. And basically what the poll is is uh, future content that we've got some ideas for. And this week's uh, content on this video right here is from what you guys voted for last week. You guys uh, voted for some, you know, care topics, you know, on certain species of fish. And me and Jeremy got together this week and we decided that we would just do it on shrimp. But uh, we appreciate, every, appreciate everybody that does that. Um, make for sure. It looks like we got 31 watching and 31 likes, so we don't have to go over that again. But uh, make sure and come back the same time next Friday night, and we'll have another great topic to talk about. And this this uh, channel right here, the Sergeant Tank and Jeff Rose Show, is only going to get better, guys. Me and Jeremy are going to mesh before long, and uh, yeah, I think tonight even went better than last week. So it's just going to get better and better. Uh, 
thanks a lot for everyone that came out again, and uh, we'll see you next Friday. Peace out, y'all.